Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level chemistry for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of alkanes, and in particular, on the combustion of alkanes. Hi, I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level chemistry with our helpful revision resources tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button, and whilst you're watching, please leave any comments down below about anything you're unsure of. If it's your first time watching, make sure to let us know so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the video. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson 3 of 4 in this tutorial covering the combustion of alkanes. This is the third video in our series of four lessons on the topic of alkanes. Here are the key learning objectives for this tutorial. First, we'll look at the combustion of alkanes, then at the pollutants from combustion, and finally at catalytic converters and slurry. Here are the AQA specification points we'll be covering in today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and have a quick read through them before we begin. We'll start by looking at the uses of alkanes and their combustion. We'll be looking at two types of combustion today. These are complete and incomplete. During complete combustion, alkanes are burnt fully in excess oxygen. This produces carbon dioxide and water. This produces lots of energy. Let's look at the complete combustion of butane. Here, when we can see it's burnt in oxygen, we get carbon dioxide and water. This is the chemical formula equation. During incomplete combustion, alkanes are burnt in less oxygen. This means they don't react fully, making the toxic products such as carbon monoxide and soot. Here, we can see that even if we burn the same butane in less oxygen, we will still produce carbon monoxide and water. If we use even less oxygen again, will produce soot and water. Now let's move on to take a look at internal combustion. Here are some of the pollutants we can get from combustion. We'll be covering them one by one in this tutorial. Let's start with carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is extremely dangerous as it binds to haemoglobin in the blood more strongly than oxygen. Through this, it reduces its ability to carry oxygen in the body. Soot can damage combustion engines and may cause issues with our breathing. Unburnt hydrocarbons can remain in the engines, which can react with oxygen, creating smog. This occurs because engines are not always 100% efficient. They do this by producing ground-level ozone. Our next point looks at the production of sulphur dioxide. Nitrogen oxides react with oxygen to produce smog. These are formed when high pressure and high temperatures in the engine cause nitrogen and oxygen to react. Now, we'll look at how to remove gaseous pollutants from internal combustion. Nitrogen oxides and sulphur dioxide gas can also react with water in the air to form acid rain. This can corrode limestone buildings and statues, harm crops and plants, and kill aquatic life by acidifying the ponds and lakes that they live in. Finally, we'll look at how to remove sulphur dioxide from flue gases. 
we can limit the damage caused by these pollutants by using catalytic converters and slurry. Catalytic converters are devices which can be placed into the exhaust pipes of cars. These are made up of a thin layer of a variety of costly transition metals such as palladium, rhodium or platinum. These are spread over a ceramic honeycomb shape. They work by stimulating a reaction between carbon monoxide and nitrous oxide. As we can see here, slurry is made up of water combined with the alkaline salts calcium oxide and calcium carbonate. This is also known as limestone. It's placed in flues or chimneys of factories and power stations. It reacts with the sulphur dioxide gas, which is acidic, to form the ionic salt calcium sulphate. We've now covered all the specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you feel unsure about. We've now completed Lesson 3. If you liked this video, make sure to catch our latest videos by subscribing down below and leaving a comment on a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch more videos on our series of A-Level Chemistry or visit our website studymind.co.uk for past paper compilations by topic and specification.